Hey everyone, I'm Mike. And I'm Parker. And welcome to Theme Park Nerds. Today we're going to be taking a look at Walt Disney World's newest transportation, the Disney Skyliner. Also, I'll be ranting about the brand new Disney Skyliner. Because he has it's a vendetta against Scott. Not even a thing yet, I already hate it, so it's going to be awesome! So anyway, first step, let's talk about what the Disney Skyliner is actually going to be. It's a gondola transportation system that's going to be connecting Epcot and Disney's Hollywood Studios to kind of a new little hub by Caribbean Beach Resort. And then going from there through the Riviera Hotel and having a link at the Hourglass Lake by Pop Century and the Animation Inn. Altogether, there will be several hotels that are also connected to it. Aside from Animation and uh, Pop Century, you'll have the Riviera, the Caribbean Beach Resort, the Yacht and Beach Club, and the Boardwalk, all within a quick walk distance to the new Skyliner. In addition, there will be entrances at the front of Disney Hollywood Studios and the back entrance to Epcot. So it goes a lot of places. And of course, this is all in anticipation of the big giant crowds coming for that little land known as Star Wars Galaxy's Edge at Hollywood Studios opening at various points throughout 2019. So what do you think? Let's go into what your favorite parts of the, of the Skyliner are. Favorite. 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 My favorite part. My favorite part is that the ass end of epcot has a thing now i guess because international gateway always had really so boats bef- while we're talking about the ass end of epcot let's first explain what the ass end of epcot is most people enter epcot at the front of the park in front of spaceship earth in front of future world where there's a whole bunch of ticket gates the parking lot tram monorail you know a place where people would start but in the back of Epcot, between France and the United Kingdom Pavilion, there's this little baby back entrance. It was originally there to service the Yacht and Beach Club and the Boardwalk. This is kind of like an easier way to get into the back of Epcot. There's a couple little turnstiles, a guest relations place, and it's, a, it's the back door to Epcot where you can kind of enter in through World Showcase. This is where the gondola is going, not the front where the monorail and everything else is. It's going to the, the back door of Epcot. Yeah, so I do like the fact that it, it is going to spread out the crowds from not coming in through the main entrance. Um, I mean, you do have, what, basically four to five large resorts all yeah. coming through, if they're using this appropriately, all coming through this turnstile, which is it's a, it's nice. Uh, I think it's actually going to breathe a little bit um, of just extra life into World Showcase, um, but also... Ratatouille is going to be opening right there. Um, you still have the Frozen attraction in the back that's going great. So, yes, they're coming into World Showcase, but they still get a little Disney ride right off the top. But I think that overall is going to be a great just – that that's the one thing I do like about this whole system. Well, but my, my – the thing that everybody needs to know when – Going into the gondola, if you say, okay, I'm staying at Pop Century and I want to get to Magic Kingdom, everybody goes, oh, well, the monorail goes to Epcot, so I'm going to take that the gondola station that's at my hotel at Pop Century, and I'll just take it to Epcot, where I'm just going to go to Magic Kingdom. No. So, you to go from the gondola station at Epcot, which is the closest station to a monorail, you have to, A, have a ticket that it's a park hopper ticket, so you can enter Epcot walk the good mile and a half from the back door of Epcot through half of World Showcase, through all of Future World, to the front door of Epcot to then get on the monorail, take that to Magic Kingdom, and then be able to get into Magic Kingdom. So it's not... It it goes to studios in Epcot. It does not go anywhere else or make it convenient to the monorail or something like that. However, if you need at least... Two alcoholic beverages mm. before you step foot into the Magic Kingdom. This is the perfect way to make that happen. Because you just by walking that direction, <laughs> you're going to go through the United Kingdom, which has yards of beer. And so then good. you can go to Canada, where after having your cheddar cheese chup, you can have more beer. 
and then get Walk your free get your, future world. And get just, your free Coke at yeah. Club Cool. Get your little soda. Get your Starbucks at the Starbucks station by the fountain. Maybe ride Spaceship Earth of the Line Shore, and then go to Magic Kingdom after three hours at Epcot. Worth it. <laughs> Worth it. Uh, one of, I know, Parker's favorite features of the gondola is the fact that it has uh, no air conditioning whatsoever inside. Uh, they can seat up to 10 people, uh, but without any, any sort of air conditioning at all. And Florida gets a little warm and humid. Swampy the su- is the word that you're looking for? Yeah. Gets a little swampy? Um, yeah. So here's another thing, too. Yes, it can seat up to 10 people. I don't know if you know this, but my family is about to be a family of five. Really? But three of them are kids that will be under the age of five, meaning that strollers, extra mm-hmm. bags, all that stuff's going to have to go on this thing. So your capacity of ten goes to what? Well, well, you, you, my family of five are little. <laughs> you can just pack them. <laughs> Two of them on are top. One's of... huge. <laughs> um, and also keep in mind that this is coming from the Animation Inn, which has the family suites that sleep you know like eight thousand people sleep like eight and that's who's going to be getting on the gondola that plus you have a disney vacation club resort along the way that's yeah big villas and pop century which is nothing but families well, and or then, cheerleading groups yeah. or bands <laughs> so it's a very convenient thing for one little group just to get on nobody's bringing their instruments i want to ride the gondola with my trumpet now that would be so fun <laughs> you can i can i'll probably be shamed yeah. but it'll be fun uh but if you are staying at one of those resorts like art of animation pop century caribbean beach riviera yachten beach or boardwalk and you want to go to studios or the back door of epcot it's a lot better than buses Yes, that I will 100% agree with. Not that the bus system is the worst thing known to humanity, but it's not super fun when you have screaming children that have been in the sunlight all day, it's been hot, it's Florida, and you're just done. And so we're going to max capacity as many people onto a moving bus as possible. Everyone smells like Florida, and it's just it's not fun. So this breaks up those crowds and gets them still to and fro, but I still have some issues. It's fine. And what the biggest thing that's going to help with is when inevitably studios hits capacity on day one through year five of Star Wars Land being open. <laughs> you because you know it, as you see right now with like when Magic Kingdom's having its phase closings or on New Year's Eve when Epcot's hitting capacity, they use monorails and things to get people away from that park because you've already got up to the front entrance and they and they tell you. Sorry, we're full. You gotta go away now. Studios doesn't have anywhere to go until the gondola opens. Once the Skyliner opens, they say, I'm sorry, you can't come in here, but just hop on this little gondola here on the right by the ticket booth and you can go over to Epcot, which is two or three times bigger than Studios and doesn't have Star right. Wars opening up. So it's a good way to, when Studios hits its capacity, probably like forty or 50,000 people, which is all it's going to hold. When Epcot can hold like eighty or 90,000, it's an easy transition just to be like, sorry, you can't come here. Get on the gondola. Go to epcot and go about your day yeah i mean we're gonna dump you when the situation arises into basically the the second largest capacity park yeah um and it makes sense and there's ton of there's tons of food so even if you just go there and you're just getting a twinkie i mean you at least got to go into a park that day um i want to back up and talk about the fact that it's not technically been announced that there is no air conditioning as far as i've researched it very well could be a fan. I know there's a vent of some sort, but my problem is, please, I get sweaty and stinky, and I have been in Florida. I know the people around you standing in the four and a half hour line for flights of passage also get stinky because of all the outdoor queue and everything else that happens. When you put all of these people into a small morsel of a marshmallow and move it at eight miles an hour through the air with no extra oxygen coming into this place, it's not going to work well. Also, when my kid throws up, because it's going to happen, and there's no extra air ventilation happening in that gondola, and we're just left Epcot, it's not going to so stay tuned to Theme Park Nerds when we take Parker on the Skyliner for the first time and do a smell test. I don't know how he got from Flight of Passage to a gondola because it does not go to Animal Kingdom, 
we talked what? about being stinky standing in line. That's what we talked about. I took a bus to Epcot and then walked all the way through Epcot. I got so got... many watermelon margaritas and it was delicious. Then bleh. you can pull a you can pull most attractions components off if somebody gets sick. This thing's on a line, and as far as I'm concerned, I don't know how easy or how hard it is to take something off line you like this. You can take gondolas off of But how easy is it? How convenient is it? It depends. I mean, you're not going to do it in the middle of the road, but when you're at the station, you just... Right, but, like, obviously, if I don't go, hey, my kid threw up in there, is there a dude doing a check every single time? I'm pretty sure the next crowd's going to be like, I'm not getting in there. How many a times, dude threw up in there. Because how many times it splashed did someone be like... They didn't say anything, and then when it comes back, everyone in the first... But then you got they it. They go, this smells like pee in here. <laughs> and that was Parker's kids, who were going to pee on everything. But, like stinky it. people and pukey children aside, we're waiting to see how the Skyliner helps out with capacity issues and transportation around the Walt Disney Resort when it opens sometime before Star Wars Land, we think, in 2019. But we'll be out there with a full review, and Parker will be out there to smell it when it does. I'm I'm telling you, I want it to be good. I want it to work and I want it to do well. But I have too many flaws in my head that it's just going to make it not fun. So, until we figure out if it is fun or not, I am Mike. And I'm Parker. And this is Theme Park Nerds. We'll catch you next time. Bye!